Hello, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna be reading three new release romances and I am so excited about it. But before we get into the vlog portion of this video, I wanted to thank the sponsor of today's video and tell you a little bit about Book of the Month. Book of the Month is a super popular and fast growing online book service for readers. Their mission is to promote new and emerging authors and help readers discover books they love. Their team vets hundreds of books each month and gives readers their choices from a curated selection of new and early release titles. So you can spend more time reading and less time researching. Plus, Book of the Month is risk-free. You can skip any month, any time, and you will not be charged. Plus, they have the best price for new release hardcover fiction. You can get your first book for just $9.99 with code SPLASH. The two books that I selected this month are The Whispers by Ashley Aldrain and She Started It by Sean Gilbert. I was super excited to see Ashley Aldrain's newest book as a selection. I absolutely loved The Push. This one seems equally as compelling as The Push. It's about a woman who, I guess, yells at her young son in front of some acquaintances or some friends. And a couple of days later, this same boy ends up falling out of a window. And I think the people kind of surrounding Whitney, the like main character, character whose, you know, son falls out the window are like wondering what happened, wondering if there is something else afoot. I'm sure this is going to be super dark and twisted and I'm very excited to give this one a go. And then she started It Sounds Like Another Really Twisty Tale. This one is about a group of friends who gets invited to an old acquaintance's bachelorette party. It seems like an all expenses paid kind of situation in the Bahamas and I'm sure that things are going to go a little bit awry. They weren't like the closest of friends with this person named Poppy that like invited them to this like extravagant bachelorette party. So I'm very curious to see what fate befalls the people in this book. Head to bookthemonth.com to check out their other selections for the month of June. Again, use code SPLASH to get your first book for just $9.99. Thanks again to Book of the Month for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Now let's talk about the three new release romance titles that I'm going to be reading for this here video. First up, we have The True Love Experiment by Christina Lauren. This is a book that I've been hotly anticipating ever since finishing The Soulmate Equation a couple of years ago. I heard rumblings that there was going to be another book in this like series, I guess, which I wasn't expecting at all, but I'm very excited to see Fizzy finally get her own story. I've heard that this kind of has like a dating show, re dating reality show sort of component to it. The first book had like a dating app situation and this one's more of a dating show situation. And I'm hoping that it is equally as good as The Soulmate Equation because that's one of the Christina Lauren books that I have given five stars to. Um, not that I don't like Christina Lauren's books typically, but normally they're like three star reads, but The Soulmate Equation was a five star. So I feel like stands to reason that this one could also be a five star. I also picked Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams for this video because after reading the cheat sheet by this author earlier this year, I just really fell for her writing style. I know it's not for everybody, but she has this way of writing that gets me really excited. And I'm curious to see if this one works for me even better. She seems to be one of those authors who has like five star potential for me, even if that first book, I think I only gave like three stars. And then the last book that I'm going to be reading is the one I think I'm most nervous about. And that is Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune. Didn't have the best luck with Every Summer After, but I wanted to give this author a second chance. And also I need to read this book for a list video that I'm doing later on in the year. So I figured, you know what, might as well just add it to the new release vlog. We can see how it is and if it's worth your time. So let's go ahead and get into the vlog portion of this video. Hello, my friends. Happy Wednesday. I'm sure I've already intro letting you know what books I'm reading, but you know what? It's a day. I have a lot of things to do today, but it's actually perfect because two of the three books I'm reading are audiobooks and I will be able to listen to them as I go about my day. Already, I'm like 60-ish percent into Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams. This is a book that I was excited about after reading the cheat sheet a few months ago, maybe it's just a month ago. Time is flying, you know? But I read that book and I really enjoyed it. Despite, I feel like, some sort of mixed reviews from people, it wasn't, I would say, like a five star read for me. I think I gave it three stars, though I'm tempted to bump it to four. But I just, I loved her writing style. I loved how fan Vicky it felt and how just charming it was. I loved the character dynamics. And this book's really impressing me too. The, the ratings for this one are better, so I guess it doesn't surprise me. But this book's about our two main characters, Annie and Will, I believe. And I didn't read the first book in the series. For some reason, I thought one in Rome was like set in Rome. Italy, but it's Rome, Kentucky, I think. <laughs> anyway, Annie is the owner of a flower shop and Will is the bodyguard to Annie's brother's fiance, so like her future sister-in-law. I don't really know anything about that girl, but I'm assuming she's like a singer or something from what I know. And Will is her bodyguard and he, we find out at the very beginning of the book, has sort of like a complicated relationship with love. Both of his parents, I guess, cheated on each other and he had sort of like a tumultuous home life, so he doesn't feel like he wants to be in any sort of long-term relationship, which is perfect because um, being an executive protection agent or something like that, is that what they call him? Being an EPA or, you know, being a, a bodyguard means that you don't have a lot 
lot of time for personal life. You can't really let your personal life get in the way of your job. This has always been great for him. He is a little bit annoyed that he has to stay in this small town with the person that he normally protects. I think her name's Amelia because it's not as exciting and thrilling. He's not having to like fight off paparazzi or anything because like no one in the small town cares. But you have this whole host of characters that are just so fun and charming kind of around the main characters. And then the actual dynamic between hero and heroine is just so sweet. The heroine at the beginning of the story is going on this date. She overhears him saying that she's really boring and that she's like not a very fun date. And it's mostly just because she's anxious and shy and she's never like, you know, had a successful romantic relationship or like had sex ever. Oh my goodness, Pickles. Does he look dead? Okay, sorry. He's not. He's very much alive. Sitting outside of my bedroom. My door has been open, but he just hasn't come in. You have her going on this bad date and on this bad date, she ends up seeing Will, who she's, I guess, has met before. You get his POV talking about how beautiful she is and how she takes his breath away and how he knows he needs to stay away from her. But through a series of events, he decides that he's actually going to help Annie like find person and like be her dating coach. And in the scene that I actually just listened to, there was sort of like an intimate moment. It was just really nice. This book is very like charming and low key and very delightful. There's a lot of emphasis and time spent on the characters getting to know each other and revealing things about themselves. And like, that's what I need in a romance. I just need these two characters to get along. And I also need the characters like each other. I mean, I feel like that shouldn't be hard to come by, but sometimes it is. Sometimes you just have characters who are like, oh, he's so sexy. And that like, that's their, that's their, you know, only claim to liking each other, but in this book I can tell that like they like each other's personalities along with their physical attributes. So it's cute. It's fun. It's not like that much more spectacular, I would say, than the cheat sheet, but I didn't need it to be. Like I just wanted this to be like a really fun read. And honestly, like so far so good. Like I, I'm actually genuinely impressed. So I continue reading it. I'm actually probably just gonna update you when I'm done since I'm already 60% in. And then I think I'm gonna start in on Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune or whatever. Uh, Cause I'm going to get my nails done and you know, who doesn't love a good audiobook moment at the nail salon? So I'm gonna do that. Uh, and then I think later tonight is when I'm going to attempt to read The True Love Experiment by Christina Lauren. And it's just a fun-filled day of reading. And honestly, I love that for me. Um, I'm also going to see The Little Mermaid. So I'll give you a review on that as well. He wishes he could go. Teddy is eating his wet food and he is enjoying it. So I'm gonna let him continue to do that while I tell you about the books I've been reading and also my thoughts on The Little Mermaid, which I just got back from watching. I thought I was gonna have more time to update y'all, but this day was literally jam-packed and I didn't have a chance to sit down and, and you know, turn the camera on, but I did get a chance to listen to audiobooks while I was getting my nails and toes done. Uh, I did read this time, which I feel like is very fun and fancy. So, okay, first up, Practice Makes Perfect. I did finish it. And you know what? I really liked this book. My only complaint really is that it was just a touch too long. I feel like the kind of third act dragged a little bit because obviously you know what the conclusion is going to be in a romance. Like they're going to end up together. And I don't feel like the actions that needed to happen uh, were anything really like noteworthy or remarkable. I feel bad saying that because it's not like the conclusion or like what the hero and heroine had to go through separately. It's not like those were bad things, but I did feel a little bit like bored. I guess like the longer the book went on. Um, that being said, I thought the romantic relationship was really cute and this is the kind of story that I have really been craving lately, which is a story that kind of gets to the point immediately. Uh, we have like the meet cute at the very beginning of the book. I mean, these two know each other, but like, you know, that first setup is at the very beginning of the book. They, their feelings for each other for the majority of the book, but also you're getting to know the characters, they're getting to know each other. And then obviously there's something keeping them apart. And in this case, it was like things that I felt were pretty relevant, mostly like childhood trauma, I guess you'd say, and like their past and stuff. Yeah, I don't know, like it was realistic. Again, it was just like just a touch too long. So four stars for this one, uh, which is really great. I, I wasn't really expecting to give this one such a high rating, but I feel like we're off to a good start. Though I will say, Meet Me at the Lake is not really what I wanted. So I didn't expect to like this book, but I really wanted to read it because I got a free copy from Libro FM as a part of their ALC program, which is basically like I say free audiobooks for influencers, but kind of, which is really nice. If you have, I think a thousand plus Instagram or YouTube or any sort of followers, you can get access to this program. So, so I'd recommend applying if you are, you know, part of the, you know, book community and you want access to. So yeah, I had a free copy of it. And also it is one of like those new and hot romances that I'm reading for a list video. I was like, I was trying to get excited. It's like one one book doesn't mean that I'm not going to like an author, right? But I really didn't like Every Summer After, and so I wasn't sure how I'd feel about Meet Me at the Lake. Sadly, I think I'm having similar issues with this one, though not the glaring issue that I had with that first book. So this one's about our two main characters, Will and Fern, I believe. They met long ago in Toronto. Now our heroine is back at her mother's resort. Her mother has passed away. She's trying to get it into fighting shape before she goes ahead and sells it. And Will, back in the day, he used 
used to be someone who was an artist. He painted a mural. I guess that's like how he met the heroine. Uh, but now in the present day, he is a stern businessman and he is going to do consulting work at this resort. He has offered his time to the heroine's mother, I believe, before the mother passed away. Uh, but now he's back in town to like help actually execute what he, I guess, intended to, which is, you know, consulting and helping the business maybe run a little bit smoother, which is something, again, the heroine needs because the resort's not doing terribly, but they're barely breaking even and she wants to make it profitable if she's going to sell it. So it's really slow moving for sure. And it's interesting how the first book that I read, there was definitely that element of characters with like emotional baggage and with expectations put on them by other people. And, you know, there's nuance to the, to the characters. It's interesting how that one was a pretty straightforward and fun to read novel and how this one is neither of those things. I feel like the beginning of this book was really incredibly slow. I didn't feel particularly uh, into either the hero or the heroine. The hero, I'm not really into like the stuffy suit kind of thing. And then the heroine, I don't know, she just gave off like bad vibes, like a little bit ungrateful brat vibes. And I just have no investment in this relationship, even though I'm 25% into the book. I mean, granted, that's not like super far into the book, but I really am uh, learning a lot from the romances I've been reading recently as to how a book I think should ideally open for me. And I'm realizing that like, I don't really like a lot of setup. I really don't. I want there to be a relationship grown over the course of the story, but I like when the hero and heroine are like tight at the beginning of the story and it just like carries on or like there's an initial attraction and then it carries on. This one, it's like, okay, we're getting a couple of flashbacks and in the present day, they're like begrudgingly tolerating each other, but like, it's not fun. It's not fun to read about. And that is a little disappointing because, you know, I was really hoping that this one would be at least a little exciting, but that's okay. I wasn't expecting that much from this one realistically since I gave that other book like one or two stars. And we still have The True Love Experiment from Christina Lauren, which I've heard great things about. And it is like the second book in a series, I guess you could say. Um, and I loved the first book, The Soulmate Equation. So I'm hoping that I like that one and that it makes up for this one, but I won't know until tomorrow because it is quite late and I don't want to stay up much later. I'm probably going to get to like the 50% mark of this book and then update you tomorrow my thoughts and feelings. And then we can read the last book and be done with this vlog. Not that I want it to end. You y'all know I love you. All right, friends, I'm like 60% into Meet Me at the Lake and I'm not, I just don't like it. I, I don't like it. I don't know what it is. I think I'm just bored. I think that's really the best way to describe how I'm feeling. It's just bored, apathetic, uninterested in the characters. I don't feel like anything's happening. There was just like a sex scene, I guess, but I had no emotions towards it whatsoever. What is going on? Here's the thing. At least with the first book that I read by this author, I had like visceral reactions to it. I feel like I had, you know, thoughts and feelings, like definitely things to say. And in this case, I'm just so bored that I don't have anything to say, which makes for an uninteresting vlog. So I'm not gonna like talk more about this book at this 60% mark, except for to say, I guess like, I care a little bit about the resort that the heroine's fixing up. She's deciding whether she wants to keep it and she's been advised by Will to keep it because he thinks that she'd be good at running it, which is nice. I don't know y'all, I just, I don't care. I don't care. I'm going to finish it and I'm going to read something I do care about um, and actually give you a little like, I was going to say haul, I guess more of like a mini unboxing, even though it's already unboxed. I got two books from Illumicrate slash Afterlight. Uh, Illumicrate is a subscription box service and now they have an adult romance box, which they send out every two months, I guess. Yeah, like every other month. And you get a book with like a couple of goodies and they're like, hard covers. They're beautiful. Anyway, I got The Soulmate Equation and I also got The True Love Experiment and they're beautiful and they complement each other so well and I'll show you those once we move on to that book. That is what I'm looking forward to, frankly. Like that is what is the light at the end of the tunnel. This book is just a big road bump on our new romance release journey and that's okay. All right, y'all, I am in higher spirits, I feel like, <laughs> now that I moved on to a different book, but final thoughts on Meet Me at the Lake are that I just didn't really enjoy this book. Uh, it's like a one or a two star for me. I think I'm honestly leaning towards one star. Not that it was like so, so terrible, but there just really wasn't anything there for me to like. I thought both of the characters were kind of like irritating and boring at the same time. I felt like the plot line was pretty uninteresting. And whenever I went on Goodreads, <laughs> I was curious to see how like my friends felt about this book. And it seems like even the people who really enjoyed Every Summer After didn't have the best luck with this book. So I feel fine with my rating. Not that I would have necessarily rated it differently had I seen a ton of five-star reviews, but sometimes I do just like to sort of check myself because I am someone who is highly influenced by my mood at the time reading a book. If I'm having a really terrible day and a book is just kind of like middle of the road, it could end up being a one or a two star if I'm, you know, not having the best time. I just like to sometimes um, gut check myself by going on Goodreads and just kind of figuring out how other 
other people felt and um, a lot of people just didn't like this book and so you know I feel I feel confident reading it like one or two stars so kind of sad but I needed to read the book either way so you know it is what it is I was gonna briefly show you these two books that I got like I said from I always want to say Illumicrate from Afterlight the Illumicrate like romance subscription box okay so first up look at this stunning 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 custom covers for the true love experiment and the soulmate equation with beautiful artwork love the size of these as well I had been on the fence about purchasing a copy of this book not because I don't love it but because I feel like every time I go into half price books I only see the hardcover which is not bad but it's just a very large hardcover book and now these are like just a little bit bigger if not kind of the same size as like paperback romance and I already have a couple of these because I've been subscribed for a couple months so I just love putting these on my shelves they're so pretty yeah super cute and uh, I guess I'd hold this one up um, not that this is like the cover that you will see you know if you go into a store but I don't want to have to edit in a copy of this book cover so I'm just gonna hold this one up so the true love experiment I just started I'm like 20% in and already it is really fun it's about our two main characters Felicity Fizzy Chen and then our other character Connor Prince the hero Connor Prince he is a documentary filmmaker and he has been asked by his boss to not make any more environmental documentaries but instead move into the reality television side of things so think about kind of like the discovery channel right and the kind of transition that it went through his boss is kind of a douche and um, he basically asks Connor if he will yeah, make a reality dating show specifically he's not excited about this but he has this sort of like train of thought that it would be cool if could get uh, this romance author that his ex-wife really enjoys get this romance author to be the main character on the reality television show and there will be sort of like an audience participation sort of thing going on as well in addition to like a DNA match so if you've read the soulmate equation you know that there is a dating app that kind of reports to be able to tell you who your soulmate is based on both genetic information and sort of like a quiz that you fill out I'm pretty sure so in the show that they're going to film the eight people on the show some of them are going to be low matches from that app for our heroine some of them are going to be like high gold level matches so like soulmate level matches and she's going to try to connect with each of the people and then um, as the show carries on the audience will vote on who stays. They are supposed to be voting for the person that they think she will be most compatible with um, to see if like, I guess the technology works. I'm not really sure, but it seems honestly pretty fun. And I'm curious to see where things go. I think my only hesitation is that obviously she's going to fall for the showrunner. So it becomes kind of challenging to be totally invested in the prospect of this like dating show. I mean, it's gonna be fun to watch, I'm sure, or fun to read, but also she's not going to end up with one of those people. So it sort of feels like a waste unless he, miraculously ends up as a contestant on the show? I don't know. I'm very curious to kind of see how things play out. It is cute though seeing some like returning characters. You get Jess and River in this book as well. Um, I also like that our hero is a not a single dad but I mean he's divorced and has a child with his ex-wife which is fun. It feels I don't know true to life. I feel like I don't see enough single or co-parenting parents in romance so I do like that inclusion. So far having a really good time with this. It's cute and I'm going to continue reading it obviously. I'm hoping to finish this one like fairly quickly but I'm gonna go ahead and get to the 50% mark and then I will update you in the car because uh, Hayden and I are going to Target and then we're going to get some dinner out, you know? Just suburban late 20s things. All right, before we get started, look at this absolute angel. Let's talk about the true love experiment. That's the name of the dating show <laughs> in this book. I am having a lot of fun with this and I'm surprised at how much I'm enjoying it since I've read quite a few books with similar premises and just haven't been as invested. I think it's because there was a lot of like relationship building before the television show even started. So you're really wanting these two to get together even though our heroine is dating some really eligible guys. I, yeah, I don't know. I just really thought that I would be irritated by the premise of this book or that I would be irritated with the execution of it, you know, given that it's a foregone conclusion like she's going to end up with Connor and not one of the guys on the television show but um it's sexy it's fun I feel the sexual tension there's really good I think relationship development there you have the heroine spending some time with the hero's daughter I don't know they're just they're interacting perfectly I think this book is well paced I am invested and I do feel like this book pairs really well with the soulmate equation because it's got a similar tone a similar feeling and a similar I guess emphasis on the romance and that's the issue that I tend to have with Christina Lauren books is that the romance sometimes takes a backseat to the plot and in this book while there is you know 
you know, the fun gimmicky plot, I guess, of, of having a dating show, you do have this, this romance that is being built from the ground up in the very beginning of the story. And uh, yeah, there wasn't any meat cute situation. It wasn't like a enemies to lovers or anything like that. Like it's just a, a typical, what is it? Strangers to lovers? I don't know. Like they didn't know each other before the start of the book. I like that. I feel like I should have more to say, but I, I'm just enjoying this book. I know I said also that I was going to update you in the car. Sadly, I was having too much fun and Hayden was distracting me. That happens like half the time. I'll be like, okay, I'm 25% into this book. I can get 50% into this book by the time we get where we're going and I'll film a clip. And he just talked my ear off and I also was talking to him as well. But I will show you something I got from Target. I got this cute little like mini tote bag. I am going to bring this on my trip that I'm going on soon. Um, I feel like this would be good for like a beach vacation, but also it'll be good for the other vacation that I'm going on <laughs> this month. So uh, it was $30 from Target. If I can find a link to this, I will leave a link in the description if anyone's interested, but I feel like it's a really good size. I feel like it looks really big compared to my head. Compared to like what I consider a normal beach bag, this is like a smaller, a smaller bag. Here's a laptop for size reference. Like you couldn't, you could not put this, la okay, actually, could you? I don't think you could put this laptop in this bag. This is a 13 inch MacBook. She's cute. And I feel like for $30, I'll get some use out of her. So it'll be really good and handy because uh, I'm planning on vlogging my vacations. And I literally went to Target with not the sole intention of like finding a bag, but I was like, I want a bag that I can put my, I was going to say cat hair in. No, definitely not cat hair. That I can put my vlogging camera in and like my vlogging equipment so I can vlog on the go. I'm fully committed to a good vlogging experience for y'all and like interesting content. Will it happen? We shall see. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish this book, give you my final update, then we can close out the vlog. Well, before I feed this little monkey, I thought I would let you know my final thoughts on the true love experiment. My hair has never looked better, clearly. I'm gonna mm, refrain from cursing. This book was fantastic. Phenomenal. All the F words, you know what I mean? Um, I just... It played out in a way that I was both expecting and not expecting. There were some elements that I liked and didn't like, but ultimately this is a five-star read for me. I feel very similarly to this one as I did to The Soulmate Equation. There was a moment where I didn't tear up, but definitely got a little bit emotional. I feel like this book is really real, despite the sort of like unreal premise. I think the third act conflict in this book will be very divisive for sure. I don't think everyone is going to enjoy it, but I personally think that it was interesting. I've never seen a book uh, take this particular element and handle it the way that it was handled in this book. Basically the hero messes up and tells the heroine and I just I just wasn't expecting it to go the way that it did I guess like I don't know it was it was handled in a way that I personally enjoyed at first I was like oh I don't like that but it played well into the heroine's like insecurities and yeah it was like fitting as to why she would be upset about something um it wasn't it wasn't something that was done to her it was something that was done in the past and the hero's like confessing about it and anyway not gonna spoil it but yeah I thought it was handled like particularly well and overall like the romance romance do you know what I mean like I loved the interactions between hero and heroine, found their chemistry compelling. I really also appreciated the amount of sex in this book. It wasn't over the top, but it felt fun to read. Yeah, and that just has not been the case for a lot of smutty books I've been reading lately, not gonna lie. Sometimes do skim over the actual sex scenes in books. That is the only part of books that I allow myself to skim, but often I do skim sex scenes at this point because they just all feel the same, to be honest. I feel like a lot of authors are just throwing more and more sex scenes into books to make it appealing to a certain audience, and that's fine. That's just not something I'm interested in. Is it adding to the chemistry? Is it adding to the relationship development? Is it a good tension breaker? Most of the time it's not. It's just thrown in there so that people are t titillized. <laughs> I don't know what the word is. Um, tantalized? Titillated. Titillated. Titillized. Wow. I will say though, this does remind me a lot of the premise of a book that I read recently. I like this one better, but I think some people will pick this up and feel like it's a retread of, oh god, what is that book called? Um, it's the Alison Cochran book. I can't remember exactly what it's called. Uh, the Charm Offensive. It's very similar plot-wise to The Charm Offensive. If you've read that one, you've pretty much read this book, um, but this one's straight, that one's gay. So I don't know. Um, I, I just thought I'd point that out because I think some people will pick this up and be like, I've already read this book. And you know, fair. There are obviously differences, but a lot of similarities. So yeah, I don't know. Y'all had a great time with this one. I anticipated this one being a highly rated book for me. I didn't necessarily think it was going to be five stars, but all in all, I had a good time with this vlog. I'm sorry it wasn't more exciting and I didn't take you more places, but I'll be honest, the past few days have been very stressful and busy for me, but I'm glad that I was able to like read as a part of that. So yeah, a four-star read, a five-star read, 
I'm a two-star rate, okay? Fine with that. Like, I have, I don't normally have really good luck with new releases or just like in general, as we all know. So I yeah, thrived. I thrived in this year vlog. So yeah, excited to do another one of these in June. I guess it is June. You're seeing this. The video was a little bit delayed, but there is going to be a new one. You're going to see me talk about it, the new Tessa Bailey that's coming out, uh, the new Ellie Hazelwood, which I read a long time ago, but filmed clips of whenever I was reading it back in March or whatever when I received a copy. So no, expected things, expect exciting things. And of course, expect the return of the vlog. I talked about it a little bit in my last video that I posted, but I'm going to be posting lifestyle vlogs. Uh, there's going to be reading elements in those videos, but they are going to be very lifestyle heavy. I have had some big changes in my life, and if you don't follow me on Patreon, you don't know what those are, but I will be sharing those um, along the way and sharing my life's journey because, damn, it's a journey. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching this video. I love y'all so, so much, and until next time.